For this demonstration, I'll be demonstrating for a size small to medium. Uh, this pattern goes up to XXL. So for large, extra large and 2XL, uh, you'll find the written pattern on my Etsy shop, on my website, coffee shop, Ravelry. So I'll be leaving the links in the description box below. For the materials, I'll be using milk cotton yarn. And I believe I'm going to use two of these, two balls of this. And then uh, a pair of scissors and a four millimeter crochet hook. You're going to grab your hook and your yarn and you're going to make a slip knot. So the way I make a slip knot, I'm going to cross over my yarn like this to form a ribbon shape. And then insert my hook, yarn over pull through, but don't let go of this hand. And then yarn over pull through. And then you're going to pull the tail. So that's a slip knot. And this is what it looks like. Now you're going to make a chain of four. One, two, three, and four. And you're going to go into the very first chain that you made with a total of three double crochets. So that's one double crochet. A double crochet is yarn over. Insert your hook into the chain. Pull up a loop. You'll have three loops on your hook. Yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two. And then go into the same space with another double crochet. So we are considering the first chain three as one of the double crochets and that means at the end of this row, you should be having a total of four double crochets. Now let's go on to row two. You're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. And this chain three is attached to the very first stitch. So we're going to go into the second stitch, which is this one. And we're going to yarn over. Insert your hook into that stitch. Pull up a loop. Yarn over pull through two and yarn over pull through two. And we've just placed a double crochet into the next stitch and continue to place one double crochet in each stitch. And on top of the chain three, since it counted as a double crochet, so you're going to go into the top chain of the beginning chain three. Yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop. Yarn over pull through two, yarn over pull through two. So you'll have a total of four double crochets, just like the previous row. So let's do that again. Chain three, which counts as a double crochet. Turn your work. And we are going to go into the next stitch with a double crochet. and into each of the next stitches. So you should be having a total of four double crochets for this row as well. So this marks the end of row three, and we have placed one double crochet in each and every stitch. So we have a total of four stitches for each and every row. So let's go on to row four, and row four is going to be something different. You're going to chain three, which counts as a double crochet, turn your work, and this time we are making increases. So we're going into the very first stitch, which is this one. So yarn over, insert your hook into the first stitch. We are making an increase both at the beginning and at the end. So I'll show you how to do that. Pull up a loop. You have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. So those are two stitches attached to the very first stitch. The chain three and the double crochet here. Then yarn over. Go into the next stitch with a double crochet. Yarn over, go into the next stitch with a double crochet. And by now you should be knowing how to make a double crochet. So yarn over, go into the very last stitch, which is the chain three, into the top chain, 
and you're going to place a total of two double crochets there so this is one and then this is the second one so this will bring us to a total of six double crochets all together so let's go on to row uh, row five you're going to chain three which counts as a double crochet turn your work and go into the very first stitch so we're just repeating the previous row creating an increase both at the beginning and at the end so one double crochet in each of the middle stitches so we've already made an increase at the beginning of the row and then at the end on top of the chain three you're going to place a total of two double crochets all in the same stitch so this will bring us to eight double crochets total and then we are going to repeat this one more time chain three so i'm tapping my laptop because i'm referring to the updated version of the written pattern so if you want a copy of that you can purchase that on on my website coffee etsy and ravelry they'll be available to purchase so you're going to chain three this is row six chain three turn your work and go into the very first stitch which is this one and you're going to place one double crochet and then one double crochet in each of the middle stitches And then into the very last stitch you're going to place two double crochets into the top chain of the chain three at the end of the row so this will bring us to 10 stitches total and um, now we are going on to our next row which is row seven you're going to chain one turn your work and you're going to make one slip stitch into the next three stitches so one into the very first stitch then one slip stitch into the next a slip stitch is insert your hook pull through all and that's it we have a total of three slip stitches and then you're going to make a chain of three and go into each of the next four stitches with a total of one double crochet into each so let's do that go into the next stitch with one double crochet go into the next with one double crochet one double crochet into the next and one double crochet into the next so that will bring us to five double crochets including the chain three that counts as a stitch so we have the chain three here, then one, two, three, and four, which makes a total of five double crochets. Then you're going to make a chain of three. This is row eight. Turn your work. One double crochet into each of the next four stitches. So we don't place a double crochet into the first stitch because we are not making any increases. Our first double crochet is going to go into the next stitch. And then continue to double crochet into each and every stitch across and on top of the chain three and at the end you're going to place one double crochet into it all right so um we're going to make a chain at this point we are done with the middle section or the middle body of the butterfly and we are going to make a chain of 150. So continue to make your chain of 150.
you're going to grab your pair of scissors and you're going to cut your yarn and then pull through this last loop of the very last chain. This is what you should have. And now we're going to create our second strap. So you're going to start off with a slip knot. I hope you still remember how to make a slip knot. And then you're going to make a chain of 150 separately. So when you have your 150 chains separately, you're going to go into this corner here that doesn't have a strap and you're going to attach your yarn into the top chain of the chain three here. Just insert your hook, pull through all. So that means we've attached with a slip stitch. Now you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch. Make sure I don't miss it. That second stitch there, make a slip stitch. Chain five and slip stitch into the second chain from the hook. So we count, we don't count this one. We count one and into the second, we're going to place one slip stitch. Insert your hook, pull through all and continue to slip stitch into each and every chain downwards. So once you place a slip stitch into the very last chain, you're going to go into the next stitch with a slip stitch, the stitch on the body of the butterfly. So here, and then one slip stitch into the next stitch. Then you're going to make a chain of five. Go into the second chain from the hook, this one, and insert your hook, pull through. That's a slip stitch and continue to slip stitch all the way back to the body of the butterfly. Okay, so we've just placed our very last slip stitch into the last chain here. And we're going to make one last slip stitch into the very last stitch of the body of the butterfly. So here, you're going to make one slip stitch there and you're going to chain one and cut your yarn. We shall weave in our ends later on, but for now, you're going to pull through and fasten off. So this will create the antenna of the butterfly and then this will create the two straps that are going to be tied around the back of your neck. And then um, this is the middle body of the butterfly, as you can see here. So let's move on to the wings of the butterfly. Okay, guys, so I'm going to switch hooks. Um, it's still a four millimeter, but I'm having a challenge with this because it has a rough edge. So it's kind of pinching my yarn. So I'll switch to another hook. This is still new, so I don't know much about it, but I'm very sure this will work perfectly fine. So don't switch to another size. If you see this green, it's still the same exact size. So for the wings, you're going to start off with a slip knot. Hope you still remember how to do it. This is how I do my slip knot each and every day. So we're going to attach our yarn. You see this corner here, this pointed corner. We're going to insert our hook in there and attach our yarn. Like that. Now we are going to make a chain of three and this counts as a double crochet and into this double crochet space, you see that space of row six, you're going to place a total of five double crochets into that space. This is one, two, three, four, and five and that means we shall have a total of six double crochets including the chain three at the beginning of the row then you're going to go into the next row which is row five here and we are going to place a total of five double crochets 
One, two, three, four, and five. Like that. And uh, you're going to chain one. Now, you're going to go into the next row, which is row four. And you're going to place a total of seven double crochets all in the same row. So those are three, four, five, six, and seven. So your work will start getting bunched up, but it will become flat later on. This is nothing to worry about. So in the written pattern, I have different alternatives for different sizes. This I'm demonstrating for a size small to medium. And uh, for other sizes, you'll have to do something else. I indicated it in the pattern. So let's go on to row two. You're going to chain three. Turn your work. And we are going to work a shell into the next stitch. So into the second stitch, not this one that's attached to the chain three. You're going to place a shell into the next stitch, which is the second stitch. You're going to go in there with two double crochets. Chain one. And two more double crochets all in the same stitch. And then for the next stitch, which is this one, you're going to go below and you're going to place a front post double crochet. So for a front post, you prepare for a double crochet as usual, and you are going to go down. You're not going to go into the stitch like we've been doing before. You're going to go down and wrap your hook around the stitch, around the post of the stitch, and then work your double crochet as usual. That will create our front post double crochet. And then uh, into the next stitch, remember this one has gotten a front post. So the next stitch is this one, not this one that has gotten the front post. Keep in mind, um, go into the next stitch with one shell, which is two double crochets, chain one and two more double crochets which is a shell. And then into the next stitch, you're going to prepare for a double crochet and then work one front post double crochet into the next stitch. So prepare for a double crochet and this is the stitch we are talking about. You're going to wrap your hook around the back of the post of the stitch like that. So it's like we are pushing the stitch upwards and this is going to start creating ridges in between the shells and then complete your double crochet as usual. After this, you're going to place a shell into the next stitch, which is two double crochets, chain one and two more double crochets all in the same stitch. Like that. And then this is the very last double crochet before the chain one space, as you can see. So I think at this point, I will use a stitch marker just to indicate where the chain one space is. So I've placed my stitch marker into the chain one space. And whenever you get to this point, you place one normal double crochet into the stitch before the chain one space. And then chain one, remove your stitch marker and go into the next double crochet after the chain one space and place one double crochet. And then place your stitch marker back into the chain one space. Then from here, you're going to make one shell into the next stitch. So two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets, into the same stitch. 
and then into the next stitch you're going to place a front post double crochet so I hope you still remember how to do that go into the next stitch with a shell so two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets go into the next stitch with a front post double crochet a shell into the next stitch front post double crochet into the next stitch one shell into the next stitch so your work will continue to bunch up and become overcrowded this is because there are so many stitches involved at this point and this is what we have so go into the next stitch with one front post double crochet one shell into the second last stitch so two double crochets chain one two more double crochets into that stitch and now we've come to the end of the row and we have the chain three now you're going to prepare for a double crochet and go on top of that chain three into the top chain and you're going to place one double crochet into it one normal double crochet this time we're not going to make a front post so there are a few things that i need you to realize this is the upper part of our butterfly because of the location of the antenna so that means this is the upper so the place that uh, separates the lower wing from the upper wing is this stitch marker here the chain one space so you should be having one two three four five shells for the upper wing and one, two, three shells for the lower wing. It will vary uh, for the bigger sizes. It will be different uh, for the upper wing and the lower wing because the wing has to become wider to create more coverage. But this is for size small to medium. So when you're reading the pattern, you will have to note these points because uh, this will differ from size to size. The pattern is written for size small to medium large to extra large and then xxl so for the other two sizes um, the instructions will change for you let's go on to row three of the wing you're going to chain three turn your work plus one shell into the chain one space of the next shell so this is the very first shell and into the chain one space you're going to place a shell so two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets into that very first shell so the shells are placed in the shells below then from here we have a double crochet on this side we worked a front post double crochet and this side when we are working this row three we are going to work a back post double crochet watch what i'm doing you're going to prepare for a double crochet and then go into the back post so around that double crochet but from the back this time remember last time we were doing this and pushing it to the front but this time we want to go around it and push it to the back so that the ridges are facing one direction um for example this is a demonstration you want your ridges to be on one side and this is the line that we are creating those are the ridges that i'm talking about and on this side we don't have them this is just a plain surface and the ridges are always on the right side of the work so at this point we have already determined which side is our front side and it's this one where the ridges are popping on the outside of the surface so let's do that prepare for a double crochet go into the back and grab that post and work your double crochet as usual so that's a back post double crochet 
then go into the next shell with a shell which is two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets I'll let you know when the shell is going to change because for now a shell is two double crochets chain one two double crochets but we shall reach a point when that doesn't apply and the shell is going to change to something else so uh, prepare for a double crochet and work a back post double crochet into the next standalone double crochet and then work a shell into the next shell so at this point we have already determined where to place our stitches you know exactly where to place the shell and we know exactly where to place the back post or the front post double crochets so back post and then place a shell into the next And then back post double crochet into the next stitch around the post as you can see here and then one shell into the next shell and now we've reached uh, we're almost reaching the stitch marker so we're going to just go into, we're going to skip over the two stitches of the shell below and go right into the double crochet right before the chain one space. And you're going to place one double crochet there. One normal double crochet. And then remove the stitch marker, chain one. One double crochet into the next double crochet which is the very first double crochet of the lower wing. And then replace the stitch marker. So you should notice that the number of shells has remained the same. Uh, the number of shells of the upper wing. So this is the upper wing. Uh, for the size small to medium, the upper wing has a total of one, two, three, four, five. Um, five shells for the upper wing and three shells for the lower wing. So let's go ahead and finish up uh, row three. You're going to place a shell into the next shell. One back post double crochet into the previous row like that. And then one shell into the next shell then one back post double crochet and then one shell into the very last shell and then one no more double crochet into the very last stitch of row two so on top of the chain three you're going to place one double crochet and that marks the end of row three of the wing so row four you're going to make a chain of three turn your work the chain of three counts as a double crochet and this is what you should have for now you can see the ridges are popping on this side and uh, after a chain of three you're going to keep working this pattern. So for now, we already know where to place the shells. So place a shell into into the very first shell. After creating a shell here, you're going to go into the next post and create a front post double crochet this time. I hope you've seen how I've done it. I'll show you on this one. Place a shell into the chain one space of the next shell. And then create a front post double crochet. We are creating a front post double crochet because uh, on this side, the 
the posts should be popping on the upper side of the uh the top surface so we are creating a front post so that the ridges can stay on the upper side so after this you're going to create a shell into the next shell and now we are almost reaching the stitch marker and you're going to create a double crochet in the very last double crochet before the stitch marker and then you're going to chain one remove the stitch marker and double crochet into the very first double crochet of the upper wing replace the stitch marker there so remember this is the lower wing the smaller one is the lower wing and you can also tell by seeing the bottom of the butterfly body to tell which one is the upper wing and the lower wing so after this you're going to just continue with the pattern placing a shell into each shell and a front post into each post in the middle of the shells just watch watch what i'm doing and i guess you'll get it right So I'm placing a shell into the very last shell and then I'll skip the last two stitches and go on top of the very last chain three and I'll place a double crochet there. So this is what we have. And at this point, I think we've grasped the pattern. The even, ro the even rows are the ones that have front post double crochets in the mid of the shells and then the odd rows for example row five as we are going to see will have back post double crochets in order to push the ridge on one side so row five you're going to chain three row five is basically going to be the same as row three so chain three place a shell into the first shell and then one back post double crochet into the ridge so you just place one back post and then a shell into the next so we are basically going to repeat rows three and four until we have a total of um, of six rows because that's the size that i'm demonstrating for my tutorial for the other sizes, you'll find the instructions in the written pattern. So just repeat rows three and four. I'll be leaving the timestamps for you in the description so that it's easy for you to go back and forth between the rows. So I'm going to go ahead and work my six rows total for the wing and I'll be back to show you what to do next. I am making my very last stitch of my row six. Follow the pattern and find out how many rows that you need for your size. And uh, from here, we're going to do something different. The shells change and we're going to start working on one wing at a time so let's go on to row seven you're going to chain three turn your work and uh, 
we're going to go into the first shell this time a shell is three double crochets chain one and three more double crochets so one two and three chain one and three more double crochets all in the same shell as you can see here after this you're going to make a back post double crochet into the ridge because we are on the wrong side of the work and then we're going to make another shell from now onwards a shell is three double crochets chain one and three more double crochets and we're going to keep working this until we get to our stitch marker So I'm placing my very last shell into the last shell of the upper wing. As you can see, we are on this side that has more shells than the lower side. So we are on the upper wing. And then we are going to place one double crochet into the very last double crochet before the, before the stitch marker. So you're going to place one double crochet there. And we're going to remove the stitch marker this time. I don't think we need it. You can leave it there. But uh, for now, we are omitting the lower wing. We're going to first work on the upper wing. So let's go on to row 8. Row 8, you're going to make a chain of 3. Turn your work. And we're going to work as usual. The only difference is now the shell is 3 double crochets. chain one and three more double crochets that's the only thing that you have to knot and the difference is now we are working only the upper wing front post double crochet one shell into the next shell chain one and three more double crochets one front post double crochet and repeat that all the way across until you get to the end of the row So we are coming to the end of uh, row 8 and I'm placing my very last shell and then I'll skip the last 3 double crochets and go on top of the chain 3 and you're going to place a double crochet. Now we are going to keep alternating between uh, rows 7 and 8. This was row 7 and this was row 8. So keep alternating between the two rows. Continue to alternate between rows 7 and 8. 
until I had a total of 13 rows and that brought me to the base of my upper wing. So do whatever number is mentioned uh, for your size. From the very beginning here up to here, I have a total of 13 rows. Now let's go on to row 14. You're going to chain three. We're going to switch it up a little bit because you're going to start creating decreases because uh, now we are done creating the side coverage. Now, uh, from here, you're going to chain three, turn your work, and then work four double crochets into the very first shell. This time, we are not going to work a shell in there. So just work a total of four double crochets, and then go onto the front post, double crochet with a front post. And then you're going to make a shell into the next so remember a shell is three double crochets chain one and three more double crochets and then you're going to make one front post double crochet into the next then a shell into the next and you're just going to repeat um, our row Continuing with the pattern as usual. And then front post. So you can see what the ridges have created. So now I'm placing my very last shell into the last shell of the previous row. Like that. And then I'll place my last double crochet on top of the very last chain three of the, pre the previous row. So this is what we have for row 14. Now row 15, you're going to chain three and turn. Place a shell into the very first shell. And then one back post double crochet into the ridge. And then a shell into the next shell. One back post into the next ridge, a shell into the next shell. Back post, shell into the next shell. So you're going to repeat this until you get to the one that's not a shell. Remember here we placed only four double crochets. And once you place your last shell into the full shell here, you're going to prepare for a double crochet and go into what would have been a back post. You're just going to go on top of the stitch and place a normal double crochet. And that marks the end of this row. And this is row... Um, row 14 sorry this is row 15 so row 14 is the one that had the four double crochets into the very first shell so this is row 15 row 16 you're going to chain three turn and you're going to repeat row 14 so four double crochets into the very first shell and from here, you're going to just continue with your pattern as usual. With a shell and then front post, shell, front post, until the end of the row.
and don't forget that at the end of the row we always place a normal double crochet not a front post so a normal double crochet into the top of the chain three of the previous row so this is what we have and you can see we've started creating those bumps on the edge of the butterfly wing so row 17 you're going to chain three and turn and you're going to repeat row 15. so just place a shell into each shell and a back post double crochet into the ridge So as we work these decreases, you'll notice that the number of shells on the upper wing keeps decreasing automatically. The shells keep decreasing. So for example, we have three shells at the moment. Remember there were five in the beginning. So after this, um, you're going to place one double crochet into what would have gotten a back post right before the four double crochets here. Then you're going to chain three, turn your work, and this is row 18. You're going to place four double crochets into the very first shell. And we're going to keep alternating between rows uh, 14 and 15 until we run out of shells. So just keep alternating between those two rows and I'll be back to show you what I'll have. For now, this is what we have, and you can see it's very uniform. And we're going to keep uh, creating those scallops until we run out of shells. So I'm currently on row 20 and I'm chaining three, I'm turning. And as you can see, for now, I have only one shell left. This is row 21. And I'm placing my last double crochet here. Then chain three, turn. This is row 22. And I'm placing a total of four double crochets, as you can see here. From here, you're going to place one double crochet into the very last stitch here and you're going to place one double crochet and from here you're going to make a chain so i'm going to make um one of those chains that i really love for my straps something a bit more sturdy i have a detailed video of how to make this strap so if you would like to check it out i'll be linking it on the screen for you guys to go and see the detailed video so what i do is chain three double crochet into the space that's one segment 
chain three double crochet into the middle part of these two stitches and then continue to do that until you have a total of 50 segments for your strap so the segments are these one two three four five and i'm going to continue until i have a total of 50 of them 50 segments after your strap you're going to chain one and cut your yarn leaving a strand behind now we're going onto the lower wing as you can see here the upper wing is finished you're going to grab your yarn and your hook and you're going to make a slip knot you're going to reattach your yarn on the lower wing so just turn your work around and we're going to attach it into the very first stitch of the lower wing right after the chain one space here into that stitch now you're going to attach your yarn you're going to chain three and work a shell on top of the previous shell but this time a shell is two double crochets chain one two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets and then since we are on the wrong side the ridge gets a back post and then one shell into the next into the next shell which is two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets back post double crochet and then one shell into the very last shell and after this you're going to go on top of the last stitch of the previous row and you're going to place a double crochet there for the bigger sizes this will differ your shells will be more than this just work a shell into each shell and then a back post all the way across now we're going to start creating decreases so uh the next row which is row this was row seven of the lower wing and uh, now we are going to create row eight of the lower wing you're going to chain three and you're going to place only three double crochets into the very first shell after this you're going to place a front post double crochet into the ridge and then a shell into the next Sorry, a shell this time is two double crochets, chain one and two more double crochets. Don't forget that. And then a front post. And then you're going to just continue. If you have more shells, just continue placing the shells in the middle of the ridges and then also creating the ridges respectively until you get to the very last shell. So for the last shell, we are going to place a total of three double crochets and then one last double crochet into the last stitch of the previous row so what we are doing here is decreasing on both sides both the upper end of the of the lower wing and the downer end so let's go on to row three of the extension or row nine of the lower wing So you're going to chain three, turn your work, skip over the shell decrease, which is this one, the three double crochets, and work uh, a back post double crochet into the ridge. So just skip this, and since we're on the wrong side, you're going to place one back post double crochet into the ridge, and then continue to place a shell in the shell below. If you have more shells just continue working the shells and back post double crochets until you get to the last three double crochets of the row 
you're going to skip over them and go into the very last stitch with one double crochet and right now we have only one shell left so let's go on to the next row you're going to chain chain three turn your work now we are going to work a shell on top of the previous shell so just work two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets so if you have more shells here you're just going to repeat the pattern until you have only one shell left and then you'll jump onto this row so after this one shell you're going to go into the last stitch of the previous row and you're going to place one double crochet and this is what it will create now for the next row you're going to chain three and turn your work skip over the shell here and you're going to place one double crochet into the very last stitch like that and this marks the end of the lower wing you can chain one and cut your yarn at this point and at this point we are done with one of the sides of the butterfly this is what you should have you can see the lower wing has closed up we've closed it up to one main tip and then the upper wing spreads out to create coverage for the bust area now let's go on to the second wing the second wing is going to be quite different from uh, the first wing in terms of construction because uh, we need the front side which has the ridges to face up so that we have a balanced top so let's see what we have here i'm just going to walk you through the beginning stages of this top and um, you will carry on later on you're going to attach your yarn on top of that corner of row six so one two three four five six you remember that corner where we attached um our very first wing when we were starting working the wings you're going to attach your yarn there and you're going to make a chain of three we are back to the row one of the wing so after a chain of three into this row six you're going to place a total of five double crochets like that and then five double crochets into row five of the body of the butterfly two three four and five and if you worked a different size from the pattern make sure you balance exactly what you did on this side onto the opposite side so that applies to the bigger sizes make sure you you make the same number of stitches that you had for your first wing so after this you're going to chain one go into the next row which is row four and you're going to place a total of seven double crochets all in the same row two three four five six and seven so this will be the upper wing basing on the direction of the antenna and then this will be the lower wing basing on the tail and then also um, the upper wing has more stitches than the lower wing so let's go on to row two. You're going to chain three, turn your work. And now the wing that we have worked is going to determine how we work our row two. So when you turn your work, since we are on the wrong side of the work and the wrong side always gets back post double crochets, uh, we're going to start creating our shells and our uh, post double crochets because at this point you don't know which one to place 
But uh, since this is already giving us direction, we already know that this is going to be a back post. So remember for row two of the first wing, we were creating front post double crochets, but this time row two of the second wing will be back post double crochets because we want the posts to face the same direction. So I hope I'm explaining it right. After your chain of three, you're going to place one shell into the next stitch. So that is two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. And since we're on the wrong side, we're going to create a back post double crochet into the next stitch. So you wrap your hook around the post of the next stitch, pushing it to the back and create a back post double crochet. After this, make a shell into the next stitch. Two double crochets, chain one, and two more double crochets. And then a back post double crochet for the next stitch. Watch what I'm doing. Prepare for a double crochet. Go around the next stitch, the post of the next stitch. So it's this one that we are dealing with at the moment. So you just go around the post, pushing it to the back creating a back post double crochet and then place a shell into the next stitch and then we can move the stitch marker from this side to the chain one space of this side and you know exactly what that stitch marker is going to help us do it's going to help us separate the upper wing from the lower wing so after this, you're going to place uh, one double crochet into the double crochet be before the slip st the, the stitch marker or the chain one space. So you're going to place one double crochet in there. And then you're going to chain one, remove the stitch marker. Skip over the chain one space and place one double crochet into the next. And then replace the stitch marker into the chain one space. Like that. And you're going to make a shell into the next stitch, which is two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Then back post double crochet into the next stitch. And then a shell into the next. Back post double crochet into the next stitch. One shell into the next. One back post double crochet into the next stitch. Shell into the next. Back post double crochet into the next. One shell into the second last. And then one last double crochet into the last stitch of the previous row. So a normal double crochet. Just insert your hook, pull up a loop, and then complete your double crochet. And this is what you'll have. Remember what we had at this point of the very first wing. And I told you not to worry because it will flatten out. This is what we got later on. So. Once you see this happening for your second wing, don't get worried because after working everything and spreading out the wing, uh, it will become a flat gamut. So let's go on to row three, chain three and turn your work. 
and you're going to place a shell into the very first shell so two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets and now that we are on the right side we can tell by seeing the ridges on the right side and that's the side that that we are working right now we're going to go into the the ridge and create a front post double crochet and then place a shell into the next shell so the moment you determine where your shells are supposed to face and where the ridges are supposed to be located you're going to repeat you're going to just rewind this video to the very first wing and um one thing that you have to note is for the first wing every time they mention front post double crochet you have to replace it with a back post double crochet and every time where a back post double crochet is mentioned you're going to make sure you replace it with a front post double crochet so it's just that change that little change that is applied to the second wing so that uh, we get a balanced butterfly so just go ahead rewind this video to the very first wing and apply the same exact instructions uh, replacing back post with front post and front post with back post everywhere that the two stitches are mentioned just do the opposite and then you'll be able to achieve this wing i'm going to go ahead and work this off camera because this video is going to get way longer than it already is and i'll be back to show you the final result all right guys so i'm done with my first my second upper wing and this is what we have currently so we're going to attach our yarn onto the lower wing and we are going to do the same exact instruction second upper wing so just attach your yarn onto the very first stitch of the lower wing and repeat the same exact process if you placed a front post for this wing you're going to place a back post double crochet and vice versa i had to come back here and clarify a few things because whenever i said back post on the first lower wing you're going to place a front and vice versa so let me just get off camera and finish up this wing so guys we are finally through with both wings both the left and the right wing and both the top and the lower wing so this is what we have in the end and uh, the other thing that I want you to do is to get a strand. At this point, you can try on your top, but definitely it's going to be very open in the middle section, as you can see here. Uh, so you're going to get a short strand. As you can see, I have a short strand of yarn here, and I'm going to join the middle section of uh, the upper wing. So you're going to turn your work onto the wrong side and we're going to gather some rows together you're going to get the very first row of the upper wing making sure that the body of the butterfly the middle body is on the right side of the work it's below here not on top so you're going to attach your yarn and you're going to make Two single crochets into that very first row of the upper wing and continue to single crochet two times into each and every row for a total of about four to six rows so for this sample i'll do a total of maybe five or six so i have one two three four and five i'll do a total of uh five rows and then in the sixth one i'll place one single crochet and then chain one and cut 
so you're going to close up up to that point where it's very comfortable for you to wear and you can see what this has created it's creating more coverage when it comes to the middle section so that it's not so open as opposed to what we had before and then uh, remember the body of the butterfly should be on top here on the right side and when you stretch out your top so that it fits you the body of the butterfly will also be like this and these are the two strands that are going to go behind your neck the chain of 150 you'll tie this behind your neck and then i'm going to show you how to strap your wings at the back all right guys so you're going to place your work like this so that you're working towards the strap of the upper wing you can see the lower wing here and then this is the upper wing towards the strap and we are going to attach our yarn into the chain three of the very last shell on top of the upper wing so you're going to grab your yarn and get your four millimeter crochet hook and you're going to attach your yarn into the chain three on the edge sorry there's some construction work going on but we have to bear with it so we're going to make a chain of three and we are going to work along this part for some time so You're going to place two double crochets into that shell. Into the middle of, okay, we have four stitches here or four double crochets. Go into the middle space and place two double crochets, chain two and two more double crochets into that space. Like that. And then we are going to cross over into the first segment of the strap and we are going to place one double crochet. And then into the next segment, you're going to place a shell, which is two double crochets, chain two and two more double crochets like that. Into the next segment, you're going to place one double crochet into the next, you're going to place a shell, which is two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. So, so far we have one, two, three shells. And then into the next segment, we are going to place one double crochet. All right, um, now this will apply for a size small to medium if you don't have very fat arms. If you have thicker arms, then you're going to have to do another shell and a double crochet, uh, a double crochet into the next segment so that you have a total of one, two, three, and four shells and one, two, three, four, and five double crochets. I hope I'm clear on that just to get a wider coverage around your arm and so that this is not very thin. So let's go on to row two. You're going to make a chain of four, turn your work, and you're going to go into this space between the shell and the double crochet. You're going to place three double crochets And now you should notice that we are on the wrong side of the work. Make sure you keep track of the side you're on. Now, after this, after your three double crochets, you are going to go into the next shell with a shell, which is two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. After this, since this is the wrong side, you're going to skip over the two stitches and then into the standalone double crochet, you're going to place a back post double crochet 
so that the ridge can pop on the right side of your work. So after this, you're going to make a shell into the next shell, which is two double crochets, chain two, two more double crochets. And then back post into the standalone double crochet. And then two double crochets, chain two, two double crochets, or a shell into the next shell. Like that. And then into the last space here, you're going to place three double crochets. Chain one and one more double crochet into the same exact space. So this is what row two will look like, the row two of the sleeve. Now we're going on to row three. You're going to make a chain of four. Turn your work. After your chain of four, you're going to go into the chain one space with a total of two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets, which is a shell. And after this, you're going to skip over two stitches, prepare for a double crochet, and front post double crochet into the next stitch, since we are on the right side of the work. And then place a shell into the next shell. The middle part is kind of easy because we know the flow of the pattern. But when it comes to the edges, the construction is quite different. So after the shell, you're going to place a front post double crochet into the next standalone double crochet. And then shell into the next shell. Like that. And then front post double crochet into the next standalone double crochet. Shell into the next shell. After placing a shell into this uh, shell, you're going to prepare for a double crochet, skip over two stitches, and into the next, you're going to place a front post double crochet because we are on the right side of our work. And then go into the chain four space and place a shell. Two double crochets, chain two, and two more double crochets. And from here, you're going to chain one and one more double crochet into the same exact space. That way we are creating room for another shell to be placed around here, or half a shell. So, um, from this point onwards, I'm going to just do a shell as two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets. Just do what you feel like is best for you because I keep switching them up. But I think for this project, I think I'll do chain one for the shell. Two double crochets, chain one, two double crochets so that we don't have very big gaps when it comes to the sleeve. So take note of that. If you're at this level, just switch up your shell into something else to two double crochets chain one two double crochets instead of chain two so let's go on to row four of the sleeve so row four is basically going to be the same as row two of the sleeve so let's see what to do you're going to make a chain of four turn your work and place a shell a half shell into the chain one space so only three double crochets And you can see that happening around here. We only placed three double crochets. And then from here, you're going to go into the next shell with a shell. And I told you from now on, I'll only place uh, a chain one in between the two double crochets. Right there. And then into the standalone double crochet, you're going to place a back post double crochet because we are on the wrong side of the work, as you can see. And then a shell into the next shell. Back post double crochet into the next double crochet. A shell into the next shell. Sorry, chain one. 
back post double crochet a shell into the next shell back post double crochet and then into the last shell we are placing a shell And then into the last chain for space, we are placing three double crochets. Chain one and one more double crochet into the same exact space. So that way our sleeves are widening to create more coverage around our arm. So uh, from here, row five is basically row three so you're going to make a chain of four turn your work place a full shell into the chain one space here at the beginning so two double crochets chain one and two more double crochets like that and then you're going to skip over two stitches and place a front post double crochet into the next stitch. Then a shell into the next shell. Front post double crochet into the next front post. And you can see how the flow of the pattern is matching very well with the top. So we're just going to keep alternating between the two rows. Rows, let me say three and four, because two is quite different. But three and four, just do rows three and four. And I'll meet you back when I have the length that I need for my sleeve or the width, because we are considering this length here. The length at the base of your sleeve should be able to go around your arm comfortably well, the widest point of your arm. I don't know whether you want it stretched or not, but if you stretch it, rest assured your top is going to be body hugging around your arm. Or if you want loose, loose fitting, then you're going to leave some room. Stretch it just a bit, not so much outwards. So just keep repeating rows three and four until the base of your sleeve can wrap around your arm comfortably well. Okay, so I ended up doing a total of nine rows for my size. My arm circumference is around 11 to 12. So I just left room for like one more inch, as you can see here, between 11 and 12. So I went for the upper side so that I don't have it very, very tight on my arm. And uh, this is the circumference of my arm, literally this so you have to make sure you get the circumference of your arm at the base of the panel then from here you're going to wrap your work around like this and you're going to make a slip stitch into the chain for space on this side so just make a slip stitch there 
And now we're going to start working in rounds. As you can see here, we are going to work in rounds so that we get the length of the sleeve that we want. So what we are going to do is slip stitch into each of the next two stitches like that and then slip stitch into the chain one space to bring you to the middle of the shell. Then from here you're going to make a chain of three plus one more double crochet into the chain one space, chain one and two double crochets into the same chain one space. So this way we have placed a shell into the chain one space. Then from here, front post. Make sure when you folded your work, you folded it onto the right side. So front post double crochet, then place a shell into the next shell. And then front post double crochet into the next standalone double crochet. And you're going to go all the way around until you get to this part. And I'll show you what to do when you get there. All right, guys, so once you get towards the end of your round, I've placed a shell into the very last shell of my round. We're going to place a front post double crochet, but this time it's going to be quite different. Prepare for a double crochet and go under this double crochet and the chain three on this side, like that. We have two stitches and then place a double crochet as usual. So we've joined the two stitches into one and this is what we have. After this, you're going to slip stitch on top of the chain three, the first chain three of the round, like that. This is what you'll have. Now we are going on to row two or round two, actually round two. After this, you're going to slip stitch into the next stitch, slip stitch into the chain one space. And then you're going to make a chain of three, which counts as our very first double crochet. Double crochet again into the same chain one space. Chain one, two double crochets into the same chain one space. So this counts as our first shell of the round. And then you're going to go into the next front post with a front post. Then shell into the next shell. And we're going to repeat that all the way around until towards the end of the row. And I'll come back to show you how to wind up your row this time around. So we've come to the end of the row and I've placed a shell into the last shell here. You will just prepare for a double crochet and then place a front post double crochet into that double crochet that we did at the end of the previous row or round. Just place a front post and then slip stitch on top of the chain three at the beginning of the round to form a complete round. So we're going to repeat round two until we get the length of the sleeve that we want. So as you can see, I've already completed my very first sleeve and I have a total of five rounds after joining the sleeve into a round. So let me go ahead and do that. And then I'll come back and give instructions for the second sleeve because everything changes when we are working on the second sleeve. All right, so we are done with our five rounds for our sleeve right after joining the sleeve into a round. So you're going to get the number of rounds that you need to do for the length of the sleeve that you wish to have. And then you're going to chain one after your very last round and you're going to cut your yarn. So this marks the end of the sleeve. For this second sleeve, I'm going to give instructions before we start attaching anything. So for the second sleeve, this was the left sleeve. It's on the right right now, but when we wear it, it's our second, it's our left sleeve. It's on the left side. This has been the sleeve that we are working on, that we were working on in the tutorial. Now this will be our right sleeve. And remember when I told you, place your work so that you're working towards the strap. 
the strap on the upper wing. Something like this. I've already worked mine, but I have to demonstrate it for you guys so that you don't get confused. So you place your work like this so that the strap is running towards this side, towards the side where you work from. If you're left-handed, then you're going to be working in this direction. But if you're right-handed, you're going to place your work on the right side like this. This is the right side of my wing. And I'll be working towards the strap like this. So that means I will have to switch like this. I've just flipped it over so that I can start from the chain three of the last row of the upper wing and I start working towards this side. But this time around, every part that has a front post double crochet on the left wing or on the left sleeve changes to a back post double crochet on the right sleeve. So just like the top, everything that you did on the right sleeve, you're going to just flip everything around and everywhere where we have a front post, you place a back post and everywhere where we have um, a back post, you're going to place a front post and just repeat the same exact process all the way around until you get done with your second sleeve. I hope I'm clear on this. I'll make it very clear in the written pattern as well. And now it's time to attach our sleeves onto our top. I know most of you guys are like, what the hell is going on here? But this is how our sleeve is going to attach onto our wing. And you can see we are going to eliminate all the bulge that we could have had in the armpits. And we're just going to get a comfortable fitting. So grab your dining needle, have your crochet hook around, and let's get started on the attaching of the, of the sleeve onto the wing. All right, guys, so I have my dining needle here with me and I have my crochet hook as well as the pair of scissors. So I think I'm good first attach. Just place your work like this. You should have your strap towards the back of your work. And we are going to first attach the strap onto this side. You can see where we attached part of the sleeve. We're just going to continue attaching until somewhere towards the join of the sleeve into the round. So halfway the sleeve. So you're going to grab your hook. I think here I'll use my crochet hook. Just flip over your work like this and attach one uh, segment onto one row. Just like this, one segment onto one row. All right. So we have this and we are placing two single crochets into each segment and into each row on the opposite side. So the next segment and the next row, which is this one and place two single crochets. Next segment, next row, two single crochets. Next segment, Next row, two single crochets, and repeat this all the way down. So I'm going to attach for a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight until right before that join the joining of the sleeve into the round or you can even leave maybe one space so that this strand is not right below your armpit but if you don't mind that then just do as i'm doing right now after this you're going to chain one and cut your yarn so we've joined our strap our strap onto the sleeve on the back side 
Now you're going to turn your work like this onto the front side. And you're going to get a darning needle. This time, we're not going to use a crochet hook. Get a darning needle. And just place your work flat like this. We're going to attach our sleeve onto the wing directly. Just don't, don't even bother stretching it out. All you have to know is we are going to end on the second last um, scallop of the wing. As you can see here, I haven't stretched anything. So if you have any stitch markers, make use of them. You can get some and attach maybe this to this point. And then get another one. And place this one to the next point where you want to attach it. Just eyeball. We are not doing any technical stuff here. So after this, you're going to start attaching. Just skip this um, this space that's not a row. This one here. And then start from this one. So that we leave some room here in between. twice here and then make a knot then from here I'm going to just eyeball and attach whatever stitch I can see onto the other side and then to the next space remove the stitch markers Make sure your stitches are a bit tight. The fact that we are not using single crochet stitches, try to make sure your stitches are quite tight so that we can get a neat finish in the end. Just continue joining. Until you close up that gap. Until you have no more gaps left. You're going to push your darning needle onto the wrong side. And we are going to weave in that tail. So this is what we have guys. Look at this. This is the opening of the arm. Your arm will pass here. The wing will be right above your shoulder, on top of your shoulder. Then from here, you're going to weave in this tail. So the fact that we attached part of the sleeve onto the, the strap, this strap that's supposed to go right behind our back or something, it changes the construction of this top towards the back. And I'll show you that later on when I'm done with my second sleeve. So this is what you have for your first sleeve. And we're going to do the same exact process for our second sleeve. So just go ahead and place your work just like we did for the first one and attach the same exact way that we've done for our first one. First work on the strap and make sure it's attached at the back and then come back and use a darning needle to drain this part just like you've done here. And I'll meet you back after that. So after working on your second sleeve, you're going to have something that looks like this, guys. You're going to go ahead and weave in all your tails. As you can see, I had a lot to get rid of because there was a lot of draining, this to that, this to that, attaching yarn and all that. And uh, somehow we ended up with a mess of loose ends on the whole project. But 
I'm trying my best to weave in each and every piece before I take the final shot of this design onto my dummy. And I think you, I hope you guys are enjoying this tutorial. If you're getting value from it, please make sure you subscribe to the channel and give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share it with your friends in your Facebook groups everywhere so that other people can give this video a try. So I have just one more to go. Okay, this is what you're going to have at the end of it all. You're going to have the Shelly butterfly crochet top, my favorite. And then when it comes to the back, the construction has changed just like I mentioned before. So you're going to have your straps going down the sleeves until some, some point somewhere around here, almost at your armpit level. That's where the straps will start from. So those straps are going to be laced up into the last scallop of the upper wing, the lowermost scallop, like that. And then onto this side, right here, like that. And you can see the space that that has created on the upper part. We may struggle while um, wearing this design so what i'm going to do is to create two straps one on it on this corner you can see that corner where we started the increases of the of, of the sleeves you're going to attach your yarn here and you're going to create a strap just like the one that we have here so chain three double crochet into the same exact space chain three double crochet in between the two double crochets from the row below and repeat that all the way until you get an ample length something that can be tied to the opposite side so i guess i'm going to do a total of about 20 segments for this strap if you worked the butterfly shelly top you know exactly how to work these straps because this is just a continuation of the same exact design. This is going to help us hold our top in place so that it doesn't slide off our shoulders to get a comfortable fitting. Okay guys, so I ended up doing a total of 30 segments just to get a good length for my upper strap. I'm going to do the same exact thing on this side in that corner where we started the increases so that we can have these two strands meet and tie to hold our top in place. Okay, guys, after everything, this is what you'll have. Uh, these are the ones that go behind the neck. And when you turn your work to the wrong side, we have these upper ones that we've just created. These ones will just tie at the top here, just to give support to the top, like that. And then we have these ones that go onto the very last scallop of the lower wing. And those ones will also tie into a knot. 
So we shall have a total of three notes at the back. There's this one, there's this one, and then there's this one that comes around our neck and ties right behind the neck. So I'm going to try it onto my dummy and I show you the final results right now. All right, guys, here we are with our dummy wearing our butterfly crochet top with sleeves, guys. Look at this. Uh, look at how perfect the sleeves are. Of course, if they were to go longer, they were going to straighten out eventually. And I think because the dummy is at an angle, as you can see, we have something like this going on. Like the sleeves are not well rested, but maybe also the circumference of the dummy's arm is not my arm it could be a little bit smaller than my arm so this is what we have and when we turn it to the back side we have the three chains the three knots that i was talking about the first one is this one that comes from the front of the top the second one are these ones these ones that we created last that meet in the middle of the back and then the third one is this one that comes from the armpit, crosses over to the lower uh, scallop of the upper wing, and then ties here. So that's how you assemble your top. And this is what everything looks like. If you guys would like the tutorial for the little mesh shorts, I have a tutorial for you guys. These shorts are kind of worked in a different way because they are worked vertically. And if you would like to give them a try, check out the link on the screen and yeah you can have a full outfit for yourself just like mine in any color of your choice and that's it for today guys i hope you enjoyed making your butterfly shelly top with sleeves i can't wait to show you other versions of sleeves on this top as well as other butterfly crochet tops and i hope you enjoyed this tutorial have a good week bye